The Rog Ally gets better with Steam OS. Intel wants to get rid of some old, useless crap, and we got the first showdown between the 4060 Ti and the 7600. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, April 22nd, 2023. And we're going to start off today talking about what I think a lot of people wanted to see when the ROG Ally got announced. How well does it perform when you actually put something like Steam OS on it, which ETA Prime has their video where they were able to actually put a version of Steam OS onto the actual RG Ally. Part of the problem is that Hollow OS, which was the typical way of getting Steam OS on certain devices, hasn't been updated since December. And there's a new version called Chimera OS, which allows you to get the Steam OS 3.0 on there, but it has a lot of bugginess, including the fact that there's no audio support, there's no Wi Fi consistency, there's also no TDP control, so you couldn't vary the speed of the actual chip. And it's hard to know whether or not there were some other issues happening under the hood, but what you can see is that this actually performs pretty decently on the ROG Ally with no support, with essentially just booting it up on to the device with Chimera OS, and we can potentially see even more support for it down the line, meaning that this could actually be a great dual system, one for using Windows in case you need it as a Windows mobile device, but also potentially dual booting into Steam OS. That could be very nice. What's also nice is today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by AudiGlow. This is one of my favorite sponsors we've recently had because of what it's done to our set. These lighted acoustic panels transform the sound while we're recording by absorbing the sound that would normally be reflecting and bouncing off the wall behind me. But on top of that, they've completely overhauled the look of our videos. We've constantly been changing the look of this particular set since I moved to this office, and this is the first time that I'm not itching to completely redo it at all. I absolutely love these, and I absolutely love the black hexagons framed with RGB lighting that doesn't look like a typical YouTube set. The only thing I think I still need to change is painting this like inner area right here. Since there's this really inconveniently placed electrical conduit that makes matching the tiles really difficult for us, but it definitely was not difficult to get this all set up. The panels are powered off of a single micro USB cable into one of the panels, and then they snap into the others with really conveniently placed and strong magnets. All of the power and the placement is done via the magnetic terminals, which is simply a brilliant design. You get real acoustic treatment, a pop of color, and super simple assembly, which has me loving these Audi Glow lighted panels, and I think you will too. You can check them out at the link in the video description and overhaul your room's sound setup as well as the visual style with the lighted panels. Big thanks again to Audi Glow for sponsoring today's video. And just like Audi Glow takes the sound and the visual elements and fuses them together for your wall aesthetic, Intel wants to defuse everything that they've potentially been building towards for the last few years when it comes to introducing a brand new instruction set known as x86s, which they are proposing could be a 64 bit only architecture. And part of this is because operating systems don't support 32 bit anymore when it comes to native application support. There's ways that you can get around it with legacy support, but Intel put out a white paper discussing what would happen if you got rid of these legacy bit supports and just simply emulated them with the actual chip. I'm not an instruction set expert, so I don't think I could talk about these super in depth, but it is an interesting move that they could potentially bring forward to cut out a lot of the bloat that's been piling up into CPUs over the last few years. And might be one of the reasons why companies like Risk V can actually get ahead because Intel is weighed down by supporting all of these legacy things, whereas ARM and the other ones that you develop for don't actually necessarily have that. And we're no longer weighed down by the previous generation of RAM because a new memory overclocking record has been set with DDR5 now reaching 11,202 megatransfers per second under liquid nitrogen overclocking. This being done by Sebi, who is an extreme overclocker, who got it done on a kit of G-Skill Trident memory as well as on a Z790 Apex motherboard. The RAM typically supports 7800, so this pushed it pretty far. However, the timings were 62, 126, 126, 127, 127, but that's only because the record was simply to see how fast we could get it, not how overall fast could it be with tight timings. But you can see here a chart of memory overclocking over the years. What is the fastest speed that has been managed? You see a huge little jump when DDR5 first came out. Looks like it might be slowing down a little bit right now. But let's see if Reese can set a record for giving us UFD deals again. Everyone always asks, where's Reese? But nobody ever asks, why is Reese? We may never find out why, but at least this time he left deals for you. There's the Corsair HS60 Haptic Stereo Gaming Headset, going for $75 plus a $20 off promo code. Next, there's this Team Group DDR5 32GB RAM kit at 6000MHz 
going for $80. Next is this fractal design computer case going for $60. Remember, you can check out these deals for yourself at the link in the video description. And I'm going to finish editing this hot news. Thanks, Reese. But Apple's probably going to need to save all of that money and throw it towards selling their new Reality Pro headset because a new bill of materials leak has come out for this upcoming VR augmented reality mixed reality headset. It's not quite clear exactly what it does until Apple announces it, but we now understand how much it's going to cost Apple to produce this thing with the bill of materials coming in at roughly $1,400 to $1,600. Again, that is not the cost to the consumer. That is how much it's going to cost Apple to build. Part of that is the fact that they have the M2 chip, 12 gigs of RAM, 5, 12 gigs of storage, Wi-Fi 6, all of that good stuff rolled right on into it. But according to the report, the most expensive part is going to be those OLED displays coming in at $320 per eye. According to reports, the MetaQuest Pro costs less than than that. Allegedly, it's around $750 per headset, so it's not quite clear what, how Apple's going to compete. It's the $1,300 to $1,500 to produce this likely means that we're going to get a consumer cost of three grand. This is a weird situation where it's such a niche product. It's hard to imagine that they really want this to go viral and like everybody has it, especially when they're charging three grand. But I, we'll just have to wait and see. They're supposed to be launching it later this year. I'll keep you updated here on hot news about it. But who also is paying a pretty penny is Hyundai, who's being held accountable for the Kia Boys challenge that happened on TikTok last year and the year before that, which was an issue that would cause some of their cars to be easily hijacked, especially because certain things in the immobilizer didn't work properly and made it so that it was very easy to be stolen. So they have a $200 million compensation settlement that they have agreed to with 145 million earmarked for out-of-pocket losses for customers. However, don't celebrate just yet because if you had a total loss, of your car, you're only getting $6,125 and you're getting $3,375 for damage to the vehicle and any personal property. Need I remind you that this spanned a huge range of cars from 2011 all the way up to 2022, including some of the cars that would cost northwards of 20, 30 grand, and they're only going to give you six grand for it. Hopefully the insurance covered you for the rest. Hyundai says that they've already provided tens of thousands of free steering wheel locks to their customers, but this just, they had to be be forced to do something about this because it's clear that there was an issue in the design. They were taking cost cutting measures towards security, but then at the same time, they responded by being like, what do you want us to do about it? Go get your car fixed at our dealership. It's going to cost 500 bucks for you to be able to do that. And now after a ton of public uproar, a lot of people dying, it's now being dealt with. Thanks, Hyundai and Kia. Really good brand reputation there. Well, hopefully AMD has a slightly better reputation when it comes to the launch of the RX 7600, because now we have pictures of the upcoming reference edition of this GPU. Hopefully it's slightly better than the 7900 XTX on launch. Doesn't overheat those hotspot temperatures, but you can see it's a little small dual slot boy, which is essentially just a 7900 XT or XTX shrunk down to be in a little different form factor. I will remind you, this is the first card they are launching since the 7900 XT and XTX came out back in 2022. It looks like it's just a scaled up version of the 6650 XT. AMD hasn't announced a price for it just yet. However, we're expecting it to officially launch on Thursday, May 25th, and the 4060 Ti that Nvidia has already snuck out and done some press around is supposed to be launching this coming Wednesday on the 24th. But Nvidia confirming that the 4060 Ti Founders Edition, as you can see here, will only be for the 8 gig model. They are releasing a 16 gig version of this GPU, but that's going to be coming out in July. The 4060 Ti Reference Edition is only going to be coming out in the 8 gig version, and now we have some confirmed pricing of third-party cards with Gigabyte actually having their GPUs listed on Newegg and Best Buy. And you can see that they're going anywhere from $400 all the way up to $470 for their Aorus version of the card, which is going to yield some interesting discussions because we're now getting our first look at the head-to-head -head benchmarks of the 7600 versus the 4060 Ti. We already have a known quantity of the 4060 Ti and its pricing. We do not know about the 7600. Some reports are saying that it could be as low as $279. Other reports are saying that it could be as high as $349. And if it comes anywhere in that different region, it's going to create a new conversation because what we're seeing is that the 4060 Ti can seriously outperform the 7600 when it comes to 1440p, 4K, as well as ray tracing tasks. As you can see here in these aggregated time spy benchmarks provided by video cards, but then when you look at something that is just regular raster performance, 
the 4060 Ti doesn't pull as far ahead with the 7600 being 92% of the total performance of the 4060 Ti in 1080p and 1440p and 97% of the 4060 Ti in Firestrike Ultra, which is the 4K rendered version because of the limited memory bandwidth that we're seeing in both of these cards. Now, one of the things that I think I probably am hearing from people in the comments before I even post this video is, hey, Brett, why are you not crapping as hard on AMD as you are on NVIDIA for this? Because the 4060 Ti is cut down from the 3060 Ti in several key ways. However, the 7600 is an increase from every GPU that AMD has provided in this class before it. Eight PCI Express lanes has been standard by AMD in this class for the past few cards they've released. 288 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth is an increase over the 6600, which is at 224, and it's an increase of the 6650 XT, which was at 280. It's essentially better in every way from the 6600. According to leaked benchmarks, it's about 34% faster, whereas the 4060 Ti is only 10% faster than the 3060 Ti because Nvidia chose to make a lot of cost cutting measures. AMD gave us more in this class. Nvidia is giving us less. They might end up being towards each other in closeness, but it's just a bad move. In, in, NVIDIA should be faster. That's my point here. I would like to see it faster out of the 4060 Ti, but where does the 7600 need to come in at price for you to consider it versus the 4060 Ti? Given the leaked benchmarks that we've seen come out, I wanna hear from you down below in the comments, and we'll be back here with more of the Hawks Tech News tomorrow, my friends.